Hey, Mr. David, and also Sammy, and Mr. Yes, No, Maybe, and my friend OG Goodname. There's something in the there's something in the documentary, the Hex documentary, that was very striking to me. I'm very fascinated, right? Not a single person mentioned it but me. No one. There is one part of the movie my brain keeps replaying over and over and over again, and I'm like, oh, man. <clears throat> and it was, it was a zoom-up of Richard, and he basically... I think they, they, I think they ask him about, hey, that guy just put in the money of the house movie, or someone asked him. I forgot what the context was. He basically just says, he actually says it right. Don't worry, we might, we might like go down for six months. Then it's like basically up only, and everything's gonna be great. That was literally the top, and yeah, that was pretty much it. So if you're wondering why six months, why six months? Look at this peanut brain. This was recorded at the end of 2021. Why did it say six months? Because if you walk forward six months from that point, it's May 2022, which was around one year from the Bitcoin top that he called. Okay? So I'm actually going to show it to you guys right now in that movie. I'm actually going to show you the dates right here so you can see. So remember, it's tradition, right? Bitcoin bottoms out around one year from the top. So you got to remember, okay, Richard calls the top here, all right, April 2021. So in his mind and everyone's mind, he believes that's the top. Remember, we have not made this part yet, okay? We haven't made this part yet. So you know what I can actually do, friends? I can actually do a bar replay and put you back here. There you go. See that? That's all we see. This is all we see. You see that? So... In Richard's mind, he's like, you know what? I've called the top. This is a lower high, all right? And if you walk forward one year, you have around April 2022 here, all right? So how he was guessing it would top out was you walk forward one year, which is 12 months. Remember, I can even go back in time and show you, right? Around, this is the top. This is the top here. If you go down here, you can see the date. See, 365 days. Now, this one as well, it's not exactly that much, but pretty much the bottom is around 400 days. This, now, this is a double bottom. Just ignore this type of wick part. Okay, but you can see that, right? Around the bottom from that part. So, bottoms and go sideways pretty much. So, it's right here. So, you can see around 300 to 400 days. So, here he is, May 2022, pretty much there. So, as you can see, in his mind, he's called the top April 2021. He's like, don't worry. We're going to bottom out around April to May 2022, which is coincidentally, if you remember, that was the fake Pulse Chain launch. Richard announced, hey, Pulse Chain should be good to launch this month in May of 2022. It makes sense now, right? It's like, okay, if April was the real top, the sentiment top, you walk forward one year and that's pretty much the bottom, okay? But look what ends up happening though. Unfortunately, what ends up happening, if we cancel it out, <laughs> You get to see, I can actually play the bars here for you, right? You can actually see it play out, right? You can see the candles form as well, 10x. Look what ends up happening, right? You end up seeing it. Watch, pop. See? So he ends up filling it out here. So this ends up, this fake top ends up coming out. So that's why when he's in this documentary here, he's basically thinking, hey, don't worry. We're going to bottom out. So you're probably thinking, right? Don't worry, we're going to do this bottom out. We'll hit 10K. It's now March, May 2022, and everything's going to be sweet up only. But it ends up being delayed. So that part in the movie struck me because he got the timing really wrong. And that was basically the beginning of the chink of the armor when you're like, you know what, I guess he's human after all. And it kind of makes you question a lot of things. That's just being honest, right? Now, here's the thing, obviously the greater market forces are bigger and wider than everything else. But I'm just sharing this part of the movie that was really, really important for you guys because that's the one part that struck at me. It's basically, he really generally thought, don't worry, six months, and then we're basically up only, right? As you can see, we got like the complete opposite of that. So you can see as well, this is pretty much what the price chart looked like at the time. It came back down. You got to imagine, friends, this is, see, it looks really obvious now. You see that? Everybody thought Hex had bottomed here. Everyone thought Hex had bottom because look what he did. See, look, friends, this is, look, read between the lines, okay? He calls the top, actually show you the Bitcoin and Hex price. 
right now. Look at this. So he calls the top here. He calls the top, and then a mysterious giant amount of buying appears after Bitcoin tops out. We come up, we have the pulse and sacrifice, and we snap up here, okay? We snap up here. So this is about six months, right? So he probably, just guessing, he probably realized, hey, when Bitcoin tops out, I'll call the top, and then once it starts crashing, I will pump up hex six months later. Six months later, because it'll be six months of hex rising, and then Bitcoin will bottom out, hex will go down with it, and then hex can then make its higher low floor. So that's what he was clearly thinking. See, see, here's the thing. His Bitcoin top, right? Bitcoin tops out. Hex goes on the mega moonshot. All right. Now, if you move forward, look what happens next. If we move forward, friends, he's assuming that this was a top and that Bitcoin has got a bottom out exactly here. You see that? It, he thought this price chart was going to pay out and Bitcoin would be 10K. He thought that's what Bitcoin would look like. Instead, if you follow the orange line, Bitcoin does that. It does another fake top. And that's why, as you can see, friends, Richard, when he speaks about the fake double top, he calls this like a leverage piece of trash exchange. You can see he uses these terminology that's very striking. It's basically like, oh, man, you screwed up my plan because this fake leverage top and just screwing everybody else over. So you, now that makes sense why he speaks about that top in that way, right? Because it basically goes up and pokes the high and makes his, his Bitcoin short call, basically like threatens it, yeah? But then look what ends up happening. If you remove, friends, this, this is what it looked like. So what I'm going to do again, I'm going to remove the chart here, okay? I'm going to remove this. Look at this, okay? See, this is what Hex looked like. So he basically, he believed, okay, this is the Bitcoin top. This is the fake bear market rally. So that's six months, okay? So you do Bitcoin top, six months, lower high, and then he thinks another six months. And now Bitcoin has bottomed here. He believes, hey, on average, Bitcoin takes a year to bottom, and it's right here now. So six up here, six again, as you can see, friends. And now here we are right now. So he's basically going like, you know what? It's been over a year from now. This should be the bottom, right? This should be the bottom. And if you go remember, you did during this time, a lot of you don't remember, but I do. You go back here, Hex had come back and hit 70 to 80% down from the top. So during that time, oh, we were around there. He was making a lot of posts saying, Hex has historically been a good dip buy at 60 to 70%. When we hit 80% down, never before seen, do you know what people did around this point, friends? What people did was they went back to the, the big payday collapse, which was right here, okay? The big payday collapse, as you can see right now, let's do it up here, and you go up from here and just drop it down, as you can see. I think it did like an 83%. This is not a full 100% perfect of a candle which I think it did like an 83% or 87%, whatever it was, 83, 87%, and then it went back up. So as you can tell, when Hex went back down from 50 cents back to 10 cents, that's an 80% drop. Around there, a lot of everyone was tweeting, oh, you know, it's historically been a good dip buy. That was like big payday and stuff. And we now have hit this nice level. Also, I want to give a shout out. I've got to give a shout out, friends. I know Gunny Boo, very controversial in the in the community, but Gunny Boo actually down here, I think he inserted about half a million dollars. So he went all in, he inserted like 500K or something to try and make this bottom as well. And this was when basically you had the Saudi, you know, the Saudi stuff with Rectum Rochelle coming out like, yeah, my Saudi friends are gonna come and buy the living crap out of this Pulse chain. You better not sell. Then he ends up dumping a bit at the start. It's kind of funny part. Okay, so that one's not happening. So obviously, what I'm going to do now, friends, is just play for you how it ends up playing out. You can see, okay, bang, 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 bang. You see this correlation? Look at this. I'm playing this in real time, by the way. Playing this in real time. So I'm going to pause it quickly again. Right before this narrative, what was Hex being spoken about? We're not correlated. We're decorrelated. We're different from the market. We're better. I've got bang, get a game theory. And then you just saw bang, bang, bang. You see that? You see both of them moving at the same time. And then people try to rationalize and go, no, 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 it's a liquidity crisis event. So everyone in the world had had USDC. Unfortunately, she friends, that was that turned out to be a lot of cope because if you just continue the story out, everything stays dead. What I'm going to do is just fill out how it plays out. Look at what ends up playing out. You can end up seeing what ends up playing out is Bitcoin goes back to the high, showing it's an actual bear market hedge, and then Hex just stays down. And then, yes, look, if you want to know the real numbers, by the way, if Hex was one price, 
including Pulse, PulseX, EHEX, and PX and Inc. It would be down here, all right? Three, about four, but down here, okay? That would be the price here. So you still have this differential, you understand that? So this is EHEX here, but if you add all the prices, it's there, okay? So that's what you, that's what you basically know because um, you can calculate from the non-origin address market cap. So what I've just shown you is this is a striking part of the HEX movie where I put all the puzzle pieces together. I go, oh, that's why in the movie he thought there was only six months to go of pain. And yes, so friends, this you both wondering like, okay, this all happened. How how come? How how come this is even like a pivotal moment of like basically discovery, putting the pieces of the puzzle together? And it's because when the movie came out, a lot of people talking about stuff and the corrupt SEC things last year and all these happenings. When the, when the movie and we got to watch it and stuff, people kept saying it's all part of his plan. It was all seven dimensional chess. He, this is people saying he. So people said he baited the SEC to come in. So this not making this up. No, a lot of you are gonna laugh, but this is the actual narrative. The narrative is that he baited. He did this on purpose. He baited the SEC to come in so he can defeat them publicly. And he can become crowned king of crypto and he can defend everybody's rights and be like a, a well, like a, a, I don't know, a Marta or George Washington. This is some sort of like great pivotal figure out of for glory. Okay, so that was pretty much what they were saying. Now, remember, during that time, everyone's saying it's seven dimensional chess. I watch the movie and then I see that part. I go, wait a minute, something don't add up right. How is this seven dimensional chess when, and then you see friends now just pointing. It all makes sense now, right? You're like, wait a minute. He called the top 12 months after the top. He should have lined up with the Pulse Chain launch. Remember, he wanted to launch Pulse Chain at the bottom of the bear market, which is meant to be here. But then we had more to go. And then that's where he launches it here. It's towards, but he, he ends up basically having to concede. Yeah, I guess it was the bottom here and there. And then everything goes up. That's why it's been like a very, very tragic tale for everybody holding. Tragic because the goalposts keep getting moved. Friends, let me tell you something. You know, when you invest, you don't invest based off when the product is made, okay? You invest based off when you relinquish the money out of your hands. That's your actual investment time. Why? Because it's opportunity cost, okay? So, friends, if I take your money, if you give me a million dollars, I take your money away for 10 years, 10 years, and then I launch a product and I give you a 2x, all right? Are you going to be saying, wow, thank you. You took my money away for 10 years, a million dollars, and you gave me a 2X. Be honest with yourself. You're going to be pissed off. You're going to be very upset because of opportunity cost. Because I'm like, because I'm going to tell you, no, no, no. You only invested for three weeks with me and you made a 2X already. That's what I'm going to, that's gaslighting. You understand that? But you're going to tell me, no, 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 no. I gave you my money 10 years ago. This return is 2x over 10 years, which is garbage. That's a stock market return. That's 7% per year. All you did was match the stock market. You see what I mean? So that's why moving these goalposts in terms of like, no, we've only been out for a while. They, they, they just cope. It is all these. That's right. C-O-P-E, cope. It is what it is. Okay. So like I said, all of these things. How is anybody to really know and time these things out? But like, that's why, friends, a lot of the, I, I don't criticize, but I'm just showing you, okay, this is where people on the other side of the camp saying like, hmm, there's a lot of like puppet string pull stuff going on here that that has to go right for all these things to work out. Now, who thinks, friends, it might, he might just pull a rabbit out of the hat again and do it again. Maybe he's right with the Ethereum stuff or no one believes, et cetera, et cetera. He might really see a future for Ethereum and all these. You don't know that. I'm just, just being completely honest. I'm just sharing with you. Look, I hate to say it. Th there's a risk. I mean, Ethereum is in its third cycle, friends. What if all the new money coming in don't care about ETH? What if? What if a lot of the money goes into other stuff? You know, I mean, Soylana's already come. Soylana's already flushed up. What if other stuff gets it, right? You don't know. You're here banking on Ethereum, riding on the coat tables of Ethereum, riding on something on the back of its third cycle curse. That's pretty much what you come down to. That's why I don't criticize. It's a captain's call, man. I, there's no criti critical stuff for me because look, I'm we're fully aware, man. Without him, no one's got anything. All right, but I know how people see it though. People see themselves as walking into an ice cream store, and they go, "Well, there's 15 flavors." All right, and then someone says, "Hey, try this flavor," and they lick it. And it's actually dog poop. 
Okay, so you know, I understand it. They're like, hey, man, if you never gave me this dog poop, I would have chosen any of the other nice 14 flavors because of you telling me this narrative that this dog poop was going to change the world. It's real, real ice cream, if you know what I mean. Wink, wink. Then, then basically, that's, that's, I know how you guys are seeing it. So basically, you as the marketplace, your voices are saying, hey, if you can't produce something valuable, don't exist at all because I know how people are thinking. However, we know how competitive is out there with crypto. Everyone's everyone, and no one knows all the answers, man. They're winging it, friends. They're, there's everybody thinks they're a visionary. By the way, there's only a few actual visionaries who get this timeline of what they're on. That's actually correct. Okay, so that's pretty much what it comes down to. It now, how does this story play out? Doesn't really matter. Okay, all that matters is you're long with me. That's it. If you're long, that's it. If you're not, who cares? Go move to something else. Okay. Obviously, I have other parts of my portfolio. It's just that this one is its deep, deep, deep blood. So this is the funny part, friends. I could go make thousands of videos of Matic and B&B, Cory Dan's, and so the upside is just not that much. That's it. The upside is not that much as this, just to keep ignoring, ignoring. It's a beach ball. You push down and down and down and down, eventually it gets the pop-up. Just But everyone's like, when's it going to pop up? People don't, look, I know, you don't, I know, people want, people want us whatever the thing they're in to lead the bull market and start the narrative and stuff. But you're not going to get that, man. Go, you have to go join Cycle 1 Narratives, okay? Cycle 1 Narratives. And also, if you're a Cycle 2 Narrative, like Soylana, yeah, only one wins and everything else sucks. That's why if you kept, if you bought a basket of all the old stuff, only a Soylana bullet's going up. Everything else is absolute, like not moving anywhere. Pole chain's lagging around hard, hard, okay? So there you get to see it, friends. This is the actual, actual information that you need to learn from everything. This is pretty much... I wanted to share that with you. Remember, we went from the, a part of the movie, the timing and everything, and then you just get to see all the pieces of the puzzle play out. All of this is just summarized in the monthly candles, okay, pretty much when you get there. What can you and I control? We can't actually control much now. All you can really do is just keep holding and just go, well, that's it. You're pretty much playing for the, and I hate to say it, now the narrative switching to it's going to be a late bloomer, which, I mean, I've just... I'm not putting any narrative or anything else out there. I've been consistent the whole time. I go, that's it. We're not even we're not even due to move until the end of this year by this magical four-year cycle that keeps playing out. I guess we'll see what happens. Make sure you like, subscribe, catch you soon.